Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Not many people are talking about it, and I kind of understand why, but I want to go ahead and shed some light on it because I think this is something that deserves more attention than it's getting. So I'm going to mute myself, I'm going to play the whole thing, and then I'm going to unmute myself, and we're going to have a nice little discussion about it. Alright, sounds good? Yeah, alright, cool. Three brothers and become fierce hunters for the Republic. Stay quiet, move and execute assault. Affirmative, sir. Hit him hard, Delta. Grenade! So let's talk about this. So first thing, um, you'll see this is PS4. This is coming to the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. Um, not sure what the date is on. I don't think they have a date. Oh, they do. Available April 6th. So this is kind of a big deal for me. Um, I played Republic Commando when I, was a little, when I was a little fucking shitling, when I was an ankle biter, when I was, uh, when I was just walking around with a placenta still attached to me. Um, I was playing this game. I think this game was fucking balls to the walls, amazing. Um, I don't, I don't know where exactly I want to begin here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start throwing shit out there. Um, fucking get this when it comes out. Uh, so I, I, PS4. I wish they said PS4 and PS5 because I'm assuming that anything you download on PS4 is gonna be backwards compatible to PS5. So we're hoping that uh, I'm hoping at least that you can still play this on your PS5 if that is the case. All the more reason to get this, because um, it's fucking Republic Commando. Um, this is mostly right now what I'm ranting about is for people that have already played this game. Um, but for those of you who may be new and wondering, what the fuck is this shit? Um, get the fuck out of your fucking trash can house and go fucking look it up. This this game is like the tits. It is the titties, alright? It is the big, thick, juicy, pink nippled titties, alright? That's what these are. That's what this game is. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about this. Let's let's go ahead and let's move to uh, let's move it from a little scene by scene. All right, so this does not look to me like it is a remaster. This looks to me just like it is, it is just being overhauled for the uh, current systems. Um, so something that I do want to point out as well, just kind of a little bit of a side note, real quick. Um, PS4, like I said, I'm pretty sure you can fucking down backwards compatible this game if you have a PS5. Um, I'm sure that they are fully aware of the current scalping situation going on, where these fucking scumbags are just buying up all of the fucking, you know, assist all the next gen systems, and people are fucking paying a thousand dollars to get it uh, from these fucking scalpers. Um, to all of you people that are doing that, uh, that that are paying a thousand dollars to have a scalper sell you this this console, I need to tell you that you're a fucking idiot because a that's not worth the money and b you're just giving them incentive to continue to do what they're doing. Scalpers don't learn if all you do is give them money. Let them have wasted all that money on those systems. Let it be a waste. Let it be a waste. Don't fucking buy into it. The companies know what's happening. They're fully aware of this. All right? And yeah, sure, maybe they're like, "Oh, it's we're still making money, so who cares?" But it's okay. Because they will continue to make those systems, and they will continue to sell them, and those scalpers will continue to waste their money, and as long as you don't give them the money that they want, eventually they will start selling them for the normal price, or returning them, and you'll get them used, even though they're unopened, because it left that fucking store, you might even get it for a cheaper price, or it'll just be for the retail value. Either way, that's what you need to be doing. Do not fucking let scalpers dictate how much you pay for these next-gen consoles. Alright, that's all I wanted to say about that. So, up next, let's get back to this. Um, this was a game that, I don't want to say it revolutionized uh, tact tactical first-person shooters, but it certainly was um, 
it was up there with, in my opinion, the best tactical, story-driven FPS games. Uh, and it was a Star Wars game. Star Wars is an amazing, expansive universe that you can never get... You, you just can't get enough of this fucking universe, man. Star Wars is just... Mm, mm. We're going to ignore the sequel trilogy. I'm talking about everything before the sequel trilogy. Just beautiful. Just mm, uh, kiss it. All right. Moving on. Um... As I'm trying to, as I was saying, this does not look to me like a remaster. It simply looks like it is being updated for the uh, current systems, and I think you should get it. If you've already owned this game before, I think you should still fucking get it. Why do I think you should get it? Because it gives them incentive to either come up with a full-blown remaster of the game, to create a part two, to create a, uh, uh, um, I don't want to call it a spinoff, but uh, not not necessarily a part two, but the, the commandos transitioning over into the empire that would also be really badass to see happen there is a lot of potential here this game was very story driven and it had a, and it had a very good story for the time that it was written in for the limitations that it had for how short the story was it was an amazing story etc etc you, you you could follow what i'm getting at here i'm not saying that the story was you know fucking you, like It'll give you an epiphany, like, you'll, you'll play the story, you'll be, oh my god, my worldview shit. That's not at all what it is, but it, it was extremely good and engaging, which was phenomenal. Just, again, for the time, just, mwah, beautiful. Uh, I enjoyed playing it, I played through it multiple times, and it was just, I, I could not get enough of it for the fucking life of me. I couldn't. I could shove this up my ass, and it would still be pleasurable. <sighs> Man, what a beautiful game. Alright, let's go on to the next little part here. You can take a look at this scene right here. It's actually pretty good. So you only get two, uh, two of them. Um, two, two of your fucking squad mates. I don't remember what his fucking name is. I only know Sev because no one gives a fuck about anybody but Sev. Um, you can see that your squad has unique uh, designs to them, which is very important to the story and to the characters that they are. Despite the fact that there's like no character development because you're just Republic Commandos, you're clones. The fact is that it's, even with that, even with the lack of character development, there is still such an engaging and good story, you kind of just say, I don't give a shit, because it's that good of a story that it, it, they, there is no need for them to develop as characters. They have a single purpose in, in, their, in their existence, to do what they are doing, to be commandos, to be clones, to fight this war, to fight in the wars, that is it. And it, and, it, and it fits so well, and I think that if you gave them some sort of character arc where they had, like, a change in the way that they th they see things, I think it would be unfitting of a, of a commando. If, you, if you're familiar with Star Wars, you know, lore and stuff like that, it, doing that kind of thing just wouldn't really make sense for clones. Clones in mass were just blindly loyal to the Republic. It's, it's kind of what their thing is. So... I think that that would have detracted from the story. Um, continuing forward, um, you can see that they're very unique, and, and each of them has their own kind of little personality. You're all similar at your core, but each of you has a little bit of a little bit of a little bit a little bit of flavor to make them stand out as as unique as as individuals from your squad. You're not all copy and paste of each other. You have a little bit of a difference here. Yes, you're clones. Yes, you still believe the same things, but you know, again, you got a little bit of that little bit of that drop of lemon flavoring here, a little bit of coconut there, a little bit of pineapple there. That's what you get in the in your in your in your squad. They they feel uh, they they feel similar to each other so that way the team dynamic makes sense, but they also feel as in they also feel different just enough to make it so that way okay they are their own person as well despite us sharing the same dna essentially and uh, it's really cool all right moving on to the next one i loved fighting all the different types of enemies the b1s the b2s these uh these i can't remember the names of these ones but these fucking big ass motherfuckers the uh the magna guards the geonosians the trandoshans i loved fighting all those separate types of enemies it was a nice little diverse group of enemies for being in just the clone wars um and for, for what you were dealing with it was really cool how it was handled and, and, it, and it made sense and each of them fought differently and it, it was awesome for example the b1s fought like b1s they were shit they sat there they got their asses beat etc these uh the b2s they were tanky they were menacing and they and they always walked towards you which was really really badass um and 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 from a tactical point of view is actually not a bad strategy because if not for the fact that they were clones that might work on normal people um because that that's sort of psychological shit where this giant menacing thing that you're 
dumping your shots into is just not slowing down. It is continuing to move towards you, firing at you, unwavered, unbent, just the poise of Havel. That's that's what those B2s were, and I loved every second of it. The big things here, you had to shoot the weak points. That was awesome as well. It, it, it made for a very, very fun anytime you ran into this. Any, it, it wasn't like these were very prominent. Anytime you ran into it, um, they were always like scripted. Uh, like, oh, the, it will be right here for this part of the story mission that you're on. It always made that fight feel really epic because you had to get to cover. You had to avoid those heavy shots that it would deal. You had to res any of your squad mates that went down. And it wouldn't just sit there stationary. It would move. So it wasn't like it was some dumbass AI that just like, I'm a big thing. I sit here. You got to run circles around me, shoot at my thing. No, it'll turn. It'll move. It'll rotate its turrets. That way it, it can try to hide its weak point. It was really fucking good. For its time, the AI in this game was actually pretty fucking good. For the limitations of technology, that, th that that at the time of this game's creation were available to them, the AI was actually pretty good. It felt really cool, and it made the enemy feel a little more organic. The Geonosians were fun. Um, they had their Geonosian weapons. The, the Trandoshans had their shotgun things, and they were fucking super intimidating. Um, and, of course, the Magna Guard, which could just sit there and eat everything you threw at it and then just leap in front of you, shove its giant Q-tip in your dick hole, and then do a coronavirus test with it. It was amazing. All right, next here. So, oh, I, I didn't even notice that. You too, the, the, his name is above it, so you can see they're the, they're the Droidicas passing by. I didn't, I didn't say Droidicas. I apologize for not commenting on them. That is an insult. Droidicas are a very intimidating enemy. Um, really cool shit. In the trailer, you saw that he leaps and jumps and grabs it and takes it out. It's a nice, good early assassination. Droidicas were very hard to get rid of. They were very intimidating as well. All right, moving forward in this room, you see that there's nice close quarters. Looks to be like... Um, uh, I want to, that looks like a, a B1, but it kind of looks different from this angle. I'm pretty sure it's just a B1. Um, there's the turrets here. There were, there would be things, um, so for example, this computer here, I believe I recognize this mission. Um, you would have to take out these turrets, you got to take out these droids, they would continue to spawn, and you would have to start hacking into the system, I think is what it was. You were hacking into it, and you would get distracted because more waves of them would show up, and you'd just be pulled away, and it was just, it, it was intense firefight after intense firefight. There, there was no firefight in this game that, um, Whenever the mission was really gr like heavy, like this one here, how critical this mission was, there was no mission like that that had a firefight in a very critical situation like this one where you got to hack into the system um, where it didn't matter, where the firefight just felt like it, you could just blow it off and let your squad mates handle it because you couldn't. On normal difficulty, on easy, probably. On normal, no. You're not turning your back on them. You need you got to delegate. All right, a little bit of time here. Turn around, help them out. All right, go back. All right, the, the wave's done. Oh, they're back. Okay, got to go back. Into, and it wasn't like it said, oh, wave one, wave two. No, no. Every time you cleared the motherfuckers out, more of them showed up. So it was really nice how they did that. Um, over here, again, more like squad orders, commands, and shit like that. You can see that um, the, the aesthetic was pretty dark for some of the missions. There's a lot of dead Wookiees here. Um, very dark uh, things in the story. There was There's a Magna Guard scene here. I can't be fucked to frame frame it. But there's a Magna Guard that jumps out here that you have to fight the Magna Guard. Uh, again, more story detail, just very grim. A lot of dark shit's happening. And uh, you got to do what you can to try to save the Wookiees. Um, over here... Beautiful cutscene, I think. One of the greatest cutscenes um, throughout the game. Not going to spoil anything about that. Dominate! Indeed, dominate. Um, this is a pretty good one right here. Let me go and back up. So there were different, more enemies. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a Trandoshan, just like with Cybernetics, but I can't remember. Because the only Trandoshans I ever gave you shit about were the ones with the shotguns, which you actually see him holding here. Which, now that we're talking about that, let's talk about weapon variety. Um, you will see that right here... He has his rifle, and you can see that the, the the little hologram thing here that he's moving towards as you ordered him to go there has an elongated barrel. You could change out what weapon you had by attaching different things to it. So there is one scene back here. Right here, you can see that this is the same body, but this is added on top of it. So I think we can actually come back here. Let's go. Delta. All right, it doesn't show him doing it. But um, you can actually take that off, and it goes back to being a normal blaster. It goes back to being the, the commando blaster rifle. Um, and then you could put a sniper rifle attachment on. Um, and I, I believe this one had a shotgun attachment on it as well, but I, I can't be... I 
can't remember. It has been a long time since I've played this game. Um, you can actually see right there that your friend is down, and if the, the, the trailer showed it, you would, um, I guess it doesn't want to show it, you'd actually turn to pick him up, and you would go through a whole thing where you'd res him, um, and you are a four-man team. It, it, this game is just... It's great. Um, so, like I said, the, the weapons are... It, it can feel kind of bland because you're essentially working with the same gun, just with some different modifications on it. But again, you got to remember the time that this game was released. It had a lot of technological limitations that it was definitely pushing to their absolute limit. Um, let's go back to... Where was it? Uh... Um, come on. Oh yeah, okay, I guess this is a good one we can use here. You can give your squad mates orders. So for example, this scene, he's ordering him to put charges on the door, and it's going to blow the door. Um, you could alternatively as well, there is a terminal here, you could tell them to hack the terminal, and it would open up the doors. Um, this is actually kind of important, because there's a brief window, if you were to do it this way, where you hack the door, where the AI don't register that you're there and you could sneak some shots in you blow the door open they immediately turn to look at you so this game wasn't a game where stealth was a very big deal to them it was it was it wasn't at all a mechanic that the game like was was at all given any true attention to but it was just that brief window where it's like hey the doors are open we have like a, a split second they don't register us being here light them up that sort of thing and it was really cool to see that um again just more beautiful little little scenes from the game cutscenes from the game um, the Trand Oceans, these guys were really scary, and the AI, you can see that they're not just running at you, they're ducking behind cover. Again, this is an old, old game. This is a very old game that you played on the original Xbox, and they were, they were playing very, very cool. Alright, um, I cannot be fucked to find that scene, but I really do want to find that, uh, to talk about it, because I think this is a very key part of the game all right yeah we'll talk about that again right over here so the making tactical decisions um you see that you're giving seven order to go up to this barrier right here what they will do is they will take that order to get to cover and they won't just stand there behind the cover and shoot from there no they will duck behind that cover if they're getting hit hard they'll duck for a second and then they'll pop their head up again so it wasn't like oh they just sit there and cower or and wait for you to do something or they just sit there like a brick taking shots even though you know they, they are getting a little bit harder to hit because they have less of uh, less frame to be hit. The fact is they did duck a little bit. They would get they would kind of move. They would jerk from side to side. They would duck their head underneath it for a second and then pop back up. It was very amazing gameplay. Again, like I said, this game pushed the the technology of its time to its absolute limit. And just it went beyond. So I think this game is definitely worth picking up if you're somebody who has never experienced Republic Commando, and you have a PS4 or you have um, a Nintendo Switch. Pick this game up. Nintendo Switch, you're definitely not going to be getting the most out of uh, your your gaming experience. Uh, I'm gonna say that just because I, I can be. I love my. I love the Switch. I love everything about the Switch. I love playing games on the Switch. I love when I'm going somewhere. I can just pull my Switch out and just relax for a minute. I can go and get a coffee. I could sit down and just drink and uh, play my Switch. It, it's fun. But um, it's it, it might feel clunkier on the Switch. It's gonna feel clunky. Um, because it is an old game, but then again, like I was, I, I, I continue to harp, this game beats it into your dickhole that it is not a game to be fucking, to stick your nose up at, it is a game that is absolutely phenomenal and is not something that is just, oh, that was an okay couple hours, no, that was a badass couple of hours and I felt so engrossed in it that I felt like I was a badass Republic Commando clone, that's what this game did for you, so, all in all, I don't think it's a remaster. It does not at all look like a remaster. It doesn't seem to claim to be a remaster. It simply seems to be a graphics overhaul. Uh, by overhaul, I mean they probably did a little bit of touch-up, uh, and the engine itself is what's pulling it together with the current generation and obviously the next-gen consoles, which aren't really next-gen because they're out now. So for the PS4 and the PS5, it looks like this is what we're going to be getting, a very beautiful HD version of the game that I know and love. Um, oh, and another thing too. So these right here, these are explosive. You can plant a charge on that, and it will blow after a period of time, which is really good because you can run up there with cover from your squad mates, plant a bomb, pull back, and the enemy might push up, and then it'll blow on the enemy, which is just another thing I wanted to point out. That's how great this game was. Those little details that you think nowadays, oh, that's not cool, but then you remember the time that this game was made, and you're like, wow, that actually is, um, that actually is pretty badass. 
So that's all there is to say about this. Um, just fucking look forward to it. Looks great. I'm fucking hyped for it. I'm excited for it. And uh, I, I cannot wait for April 6th because I will definitely be grabbing a copy of Star Wars Public Commando uh, with the updated graphics. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. And if you like the video, be sure to shove it up your ass. And um, goodbye.